Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. In this video, we're gonna create what I like to call an infinite zoom. I'm not sure what exactly the uh, real definition of it's called because I couldn't find it anywhere, but I'm gonna call it the infinite zoom effect where you can basically take like a camera and it seems like you are constantly, you know, dollying in through images or video or vector graphics, whatever you wanna do. It's just a very consistent zoom effect that you can easily control. It's actually very easy to do. You don't have to complicate anything using null objects or cameras. It's really just parenting and scaling. So let's go ahead and let's get started on this. We have four different images here. We have two vectors, which is a castle, a bedroom, and we have two photos, which is just cut out of a photo and just this awesome shot in on the road. So to get started, the first thing we want to do is we want, we want to determine where our zooming is going to take place. So the first thing first, I already created a mask around this castle door. And what's the benefit of creating vectors is that in Illustrator, you can easily delete, you know, certain shapes. Of course, I decided to mask it here. The reason why I'm showing vectors and, you know, photos, which can also be video, is that with vectors, you're not going to see any of the pixels. It's geometry based. And with the photos, you know, that's pix pixel based. And that's where you're going to see some pixelization. But since we're going to be, uh, you know, doing a lot of blur, you're not going to be able to see that as much. But I figured, you know, these are both real applications, vectors and photos, uh, or should I say video. Uh, but let's come over here and let's get started. So, so the first thing we want to do is determine where the zoom is going to take place. So let's grab the pan behind tool and let's just say that we're going to drag this anchor point down through the middle of this doorway. So we know we're going to zoom through the doorway. So once we have that in there, let's go ahead and hide the castle layer. And let's say the second zoom is going to take place through this picture, right? So we move our anchor point and we'll put this right in the center of our picture. Now to get started here, I want to actually mask out the picture frame here. So we can grab like the rectangle tool or the pen tool whatever makes the most sense. And I'm just gonna draw out a mask like so to kind of cut this out. And I'll set the mask one to subtract. All right, so this is good to go. And let's turn that layer off and say, we want our second zoom to be through the photo here. Um, so let's grab our pan behind tool and let's make sure that this is gonna be in the center of the photo, at, at least very roughly there. And then we come over here and we can mask out the, uh, you know, the frame here. All right, and we'll set this to subtract as well. Now we have that transparency there and let's turn on our last photo here, which we're not gonna do anything special if this, this is just the final photo. So really what's important is to, to identify what you want to zoom through. So now everything is completely set up for success and we should have no problem making this work. So now let's actually get into the zoom animation of this entire tutorial. So let's hit S on keyboard for our first layer, which will bring up the scale. And let's add a keyframe for scale. And we'll move forward maybe by a second and a half here. And we'll just do a slight zoom in to create like a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of dollying in animation. So we can kind of see what's going on in this scene. If we have these bats flying around or whatever we're doing here, we have a little bit of time to make out what's happening here. So after a second, we want to zoom through the doorway and we want to go to the next scene. So from here, we could just increase the scale all the way. And as you see, since our anchor point is in the middle of the doorway, we're zooming into the door. Now we just wanna make sure that we can kind of get through the doorway. It doesn't have to be completely gone because from here we're gonna hit T on a keyboard. So hit shift T on your keyboard, bring up the opacity and just add a keyframe for opacity. And we'll go forward by one frame and bring it down to 0%. So make sure those, you know, the opacity keyframe and the scale keyframe are like the last keyframes here, right? So now you have the scale in here. So the problem here is, is that as we dolly in on the castle, the bedroom, you know, scene isn't moving with it because it's supposed to be in the doorway. It looks just a little bit, you know, odd, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to hit S on keyboard for scale for the bedroom scene. And we're going to scale this into place. And we might also want to, you know, hit P on our keyboard as well to, for position and really bring this in here. And we'll just really tighten this up. So here we're at the first frame. Let's go ahead and parent this to the castle layer, right? So we parent the bedroom scene to the castle layer. And as we're going through here, we can see our, you know, our bedroom's kind of caught up in there and zooming in. So that's fine, right? So what we, what we want to do is add a keyframe for scale for our bedroom at the first, you know, keyframe of our castle, go to the last keyframe of our castle, and we want to make sure we decrease the scale here until everything's, you know, correctly in place. And also add a keyframe for position since the position was kind of off a little bit. So make sure that keyframe goes to the beginning of the timeline and just reposition as you need to. Okay, so I have this entire scene in here and we need to add one more keyframe to the beginning here. So we'll come here to scale and we'll just make sure it stays nicely in place without acting too weird. So we have this proportional scale and now we zoom into our scene 
and now we're in our bedroom here. So that's looking good. And then we can move forward by like another second or so. Make sure you have some time to actually make out what's happening in your scene. And we can increase the scale by a touch. So now once we're in this scene, you can see that we have some time to make out what's going on. Maybe we'll stretch this out just by a little bit longer. Now let's go ahead and zoom into the photo. So maybe we'll go by like another second and a half or so or second. And we'll scale right into our actual photo. And then when we're done here, hit T and keyboard for opacity, add a keyframe for that, bring that back by one frame, and we can lower the opacity to 0%. And actually, let's go ahead and drag these opacity keyframes out just by maybe two frames here. So it's a little bit of a nice faded out look to it. There we go, that's good. So now what we want to do is make sure that this layer is parented to the bedroom layer. And now we should have no problem here. So as you can see, we have this very easy zoom here. And make sure you parented it to the last while you were at the last keyframe of the bedroom layer, right? So now here's the issue: you can see through uh, the actual like the picture is not taking the actual you know size of the photo frame, which is fine. We can easily fix that. So, so what we can do to easily fix this: we can bring up the scale for the photo here, and we can bring maybe bring this like 4.2 percent until you know it covers up the full frame. All right, so now we have no issue at all, and this one is looking fine. So now we got to add our last photo in here. And we already have mask cut out, so go ahead and turn the last photo on. And once again, let's go to photo one. Let's add a keyframe for the scale animation. Let's move forward by a second. Let's just increase the scale by a touch. So maybe we'll do like 5.5%. And you know, we'll have a little bit of a scale animation. Of course, you can always you know animate the position if you really want. But we'll come over here and we'll move forward by you know, a, you know half a second and we'll scale all the way through the picture here. And actually, in this case, we actually probably could just scale through the picture instead of the opacity. So in some cases, you can easily win. So now you, you want to pick a frame where you can actually see, you know, the best, you know, portion of the photo, which is this frame right here, and then parent this to the photo one. As you see, it's all consistent in there. Make sure there's nothing, you know, jumping out and like any, you know, transparency. So make sure you go to the last keyframe for the photo one and parent photo two to photo one. So now we run through here. We can see our photos nicely in place. Now we all we gotta do is make sure that the scaling is gonna be fine. So hit S or keyboard, go to the first keyframe of the scale photo one, add a keyframe for scale, bring this keyframe back to the last keyframe here, and let's go and scale this up. That's fine. And now we go to the second keyframe here. So basically you gotta match up the scaling for every keyframe in here and just match this up to where it needs to be. So now we have this. And now we have our second photo in here and we go to like maybe seven seconds here and we'll just continue the scaling. When you're done, make sure to turn on motion blur and turn it on at the top and you really should be good to go. And let's go ahead and render this out. And after a quick render, here is our infinite zoom. And there's something I want to you know, bring attention that I didn't bring up in the tutorial is that there's this little scaling out animation as we kind of zoom in here. And that's just because the aspect ratios are not necessarily the same. So the reason why like this uh, zoom in right here is fine. There's like no zoom out is because the picture is already a rectangle, right? Like the this uh, photo right here is a rectangle and we put it in a rectangle frame. So we didn't have to like make any adjustments on that. This And if we look at this one, we as you can see, as we zoom into the car, the picture kind of zooms out a little bit and that's because the aspect ratio is not the same because right here we're using the full body of this picture around the picture frame right and as we zoom in here we have to readjust that and make some changes so that's just something you have to consider when you're doing this so if your aspect ratio is kind of weird it's not going to be necessarily smooth so just consider that and you should be good to go so hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and found it insightful if you guys did enjoy the video please drop a like subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this and please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks those links are in the description of the video and as always i hope you have a good day